Hello everyone, this is Lim AK here and I'm playing a little bit of Strike Suit Zero. This is a space combat game from Born Ready Games and this is also a Kickstarter game so it's, you know, another one of those to come out and it's a pretty good game. It's got some fairly significant flaws but I'll get to that in a moment. So, you know, you have the single player mode here and there's, you know, 13 different missions and, you know, I've gone about halfway around here so I'm just going to be one of these ones here and you can see there's a secondary objective here that would unlock a shield upgrade so I've already actually done that for this particular level haven't always done that and you have four ships to choose from normally when you first get to a level you'd only be able to pick one so actually at this point in the game you don't even have access to the strike suit so I've but you know this is the game called strike suit zero so of course I'm going to be playing the strike suit for this showdown and you know, over the game I've acquired sort of level 1 upgrade for all of these and it, there seems to be one of these each level but they're on 13 levels so presumably it would maybe have multiple secondary objectives you know I haven't got to that point yet but you see actually each one of these ships has different slots so this one has two gun slots two missile slots this has three missile slots so you know you can carry a lot more ammunition uh, no, sorry strike suit and you know, there's a small bit of customization here where you can sort of pick a small plasma gun or medium. You can't change the secondary. And you know, you've got a couple of different missiles here. I generally quite like the swarm missiles and rocket pods are, you know, uh, just, you know, dumb fire missiles. They're really good against slow moving targets like corvettes or like turrets and that sort of thing. So, all right, let's just go straight in. I'm not gonna talk for a moment. Check out. But where's the fleet? I'm looking at it. What's left of it? Oh my god. What the hell happened here? There's no colonial wreckage. We lost the battle. Maybe the whole war. How? Not even the Black Fleet could do that much damage. Well, something did. And whatever it was, it tore a hole through an entire world. What do we do? Check the area and look for survivors. So yeah, there is a story to this game. I'm obviously not going to talk too much about that, but you know, here is me in my strike suit. I, you know, I can go into first-person mode. There's no sort of cockpit or anything, but I generally prefer playing like this. And in the top right, you can see I have thrusters, and as I use them, it drains that meter. And also tied to that thruster is an EMP, which is used to deflect missiles which obviously they're not around at the moment, but you know, it's good for preventing damage and it's sort of an interesting mechanic of, you know, you want to have thrusters because that lets you get in and out of battles much faster, but you also want to be able to use EMPs to prevent, you know, you dying. And at the top you have armor and shields and armor doesn't regenerate as the level progresses and shields, you know, regenerate when you aren't being shot at as is about to happen and unique to the strike suit is that flux meter which you know governs how often I can go into strike suit mode like so and this is the mode that kills things very quickly so, you know, I've already destroyed most of them but normally you'd be flying around like this and at this point of the game you don't have access to strike suit and you would definitely be killing them like this so you know, you swap between your main main gun and machine gun. Machine guns are really, really good against taking down their shields really quickly, so you can see, like, all it takes is, is just a few seconds. And also, like, the reticle for machine guns is massive, so you just need to point in its general direction and it will just take their shields out. This main gun, you know, it does a lot more damage to hull. And I also have that stock of missile supplies. I've got swarm and rocket pods for this mission, so rocket pods are sort of good for picking off multiple targets. Mayday, mayday. One thing to note about Strike Zero is that all of the missions seem really, really long. There's a bunch of interconnected uh, sort of areas. So you move from that area down to this one to help the Arcadia. No, Mercury. 
Sorry, Arcadia's laser. Spoilers. Spoilers for about like five we'll minutes. To get the back it's going to take some time. Just keep them so there's a, then. you know, because the missions are so long, there's a fair amount of variety in terms of objectives, but they don't really change the fact that for the most part, what you're doing is kill everything. And the strike suit is incredibly good at doing that. And um, you're just using the main gun, but the strike suit also has those, well, actually, that's obviously not a very good display of the strike suit's uh, rocket pods. But, you know, I can lock on with my secondary and just sort of ignore that shit now, because that's probably enough to destroy it. And, you know, the actual flight model of chasing down enemies and blowing them up and dogfighting, that's really good. I mean, the AI is definitely not fantastic. They're you know, fairly fodder like both your allies and uh, enemies. But, you know, it feels really, really good of, you know, flying around between fighter to fighter. And enemies are just going to keep on coming until the Mercury gets its weapons online, which is, you know... No. Oh. Note to self, not the EMP button. So normally to fire an EMP and have it be effective against missiles, you need to wait till the missile gets in range of your EMP, which is generally quite small, so... You know, you sort of want to wait till the last possible moment for letting loose. So I'm talking between enemies using F and R, and one of which selects the nearest target and the other one picks whoever's in front of me. And So where is that? And the other, and one and sort of annoying quirk about pick nearest target is it prioritizes your objective, which is in one way really really good because it meant that I could really easily pick this Corvette. Very seriously, missiles coming in by the EMP. And I've just locked on about a dozen missiles against the Corvette, and Corvette's gone. Which is, you know, sort of one of the reasons why you don't have the strike suit at this point, because it's really, really powerful. I've done absolutely horrifically at actually avoiding missile fire, which is fantastic. But the missions go on for a little bit too long. They sort of overstay their welcome. It would be good if they were maybe not quite half the length, but, you know, shave off at least a good couple minutes off each mission and it would definitely improve, have improved how the game plays significantly because the way it is, every single one of them sort of overstays their welcome. It's just like, right, okay, still in this area, still fighting, still shooting down lots and lots of ships. Uh, you know, but the environments themselves, really, really pretty. Uh, you've got lots and lots of wreckage all around, and you've got lots of good environmental stuff. I mean, for the most part, a lot of it doesn't come into play because you're sort of in the emptiness of space, but a lot of the time, you know, it is actually relevant. Whatever it is, it's headed for Earth. What do you want to do? Also, one unfortunate thing about the mission structure is there is a little bit of an over-reliance on escort missions, which are, of course, the bane of video games and unfortunately don't seem to want to die. And it seems that one ready games has really caught on to that. And while most of them are like this and that well, I say most, that's not true at all. Well, some of them are like this one where early on that, you're, that the capital ship is not really in any real danger. Um, 
if you actually pay attention. Uh, that's definitely not the case in future where it's just, you know, an annoying chore where you really want to be going around flying around and actually doing things instead you're sort of babysitting this capital ship that seems utterly incapable of preventing itself from death. And some of the late missions are really, really brutally difficult to the point of kind of being unfair. And a lot of that is to do with how the game rates you and deals with unlocks. It sort of seems it's trying to push you into going back and replaying earlier levels to get better scores. And, you know, unlocking all of the upgrades for your ship. As I said earlier, I'd only upgraded five and I've played the missions, so I should need to go back and play some of those other levels to do the secondary objectives. So I can actually survive because I'm actually stuck on that mission because I got in a. I got to a checkpoint where it was more or less impossible for me to uh, complete, which is unfortunate. And you can see I'm sort of just selecting a whole bunch of enemies and I'm just gonna let all of them fly and that should kill. So this is why the strike suit is really, really fun. Because it's ridiculously powerful and turns enemy fighters into mash. Unfortunately, the fact that they have made the strike suit so cool is that some of the other fighters definitely aren't as fun or interesting to play. Well, but... You know, the fight model itself is still really, really good. So, you know, they've definitely nailed that part of the space combat experience. We found what the that sounded really after. weird. There's a UNE carrier pinned down by an enemy capital ship and multiple attack teams. Sir, I think it's the Arcadia. She's still in one piece? Early. We're heavily outgunned here, requesting immediate support. Uh, that wasn't quite enough to destroy it. But there are some torpedoes here that I should probably deal with first. Copy that, Reynolds. I didn't think anyone else survived. There's a few of us, sir. Need any help? I think even you might be outmatched this time, Reynolds. Don't worry, sir. The Mercury is inbound. Sit tight. But yeah, the bad thing about uh, the targeting system and picking it that you don't really have much situational awareness of, you know, what's actually around you. So your shields, while, you know, they recharge fairly quickly after you're out of a battle, it's, you know, you don't really have much in the way of knowing what your retreating to. So for all you know, you could be flying right into a whole host of enemy troops. And this definitely happened before and I've just, you know, died horribly because of it because, you know, your shields definitely don't last a whole lot of time. And, you know, using rocket pods definitely helps against these larger targets, but... Arcadia, this is UNE Frigate Mercury. It's good to see you in one piece, sir. Appreciate it. Now take down that capital ship. So I'm just gonna target all of your turrets. Target the frigate's black turrets. That'll give the Mercury's torpedoes a chance to break through. You can see, shields are gone. We'll retreat from battle and I'll return. But I'm just about running out of time here, but... You know, in general, overall, really, really like this game. It's got a couple of problems, especially with like overly long missions and too much of a reliance on wonderful escort missions, but you know, it's definitely a fun game to play I, and hopefully it will be new missions in the future that definitely learn a few things from what this doesn't do well. But anyway, this is been Minkay. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.